Good morning. Let's think about another thing about sola scriptura. And this time, let's think about it in negative terms. What does it not mean? Um, simply put, we'll say it this way. Sola scriptura does not mean that the Bible is the only authority. It does not mean that the Bible is the only authority. Keep in mind, sola scriptura is not solo scriptura. Um, we can say it in the Latin this way. Sola scriptura is not nuda scriptura. And that means scripture denuded of or uh, without any appeal to church tradition. Again, it means that scripture is the final authority, but certainly we gain insights to scripture through history and through tradition. So there's a, a, a bunch of websites online you can go to. Uh, this one is uh, www.christian.com dash history.org. I actually wouldn't recommend you go there. And the reason I wouldn't is a quote like this. There's a whole section of quotes by Martin Luther. Here's the heading above those quotes. It's a fundamental misunderstanding of, an, of a key aspect of church history, which makes me suspicious of some other things that might be available on the site. Here is the quote. Quotes by Martin Luther on sola scriptura or scripture only. That's the heading. This is the teaching that we should reject tradition entirely and that all we need can be learned from the Bible. That is literally not what Sola Scriptura means at all. Sola Scriptura is sensitive to the following roles. I want you to keep this in mind. First, it's sensitive to the role of tradition. Um, as uh, a couple different quotes, but I'll, I'll give you one from a guy named John Jefferson Davis, who is a, a historical theologian. He says the following, Evangelicals can affirm the primacy of Scripture without implying that the Holy Spirit has taught nothing to the church over 1900 years. A slogan such as, No creed but the Bible, does not really eliminate all church tradition. It merely substitutes new traditions, those of the denominational leader and his followers, for older ones. Anti-credal and anti-traditional attitudes can lead theologically and ecclesiastically to counterproductive efforts to merely reinvent the wheel. Uh, as Kevin Van Hooser says, tradition is but the moon to Scripture's sun. What light tradition casts and what authority it has is secondary and derivative, ministerial. Though it is nonetheless real light, the Spirit has been guiding the church into all truth for centuries. So think of tradition as the moon to the sun in that way. It's reflecting if it's done properly, right? It, it, it could reflect it wrongly, but it's reflecting. It gets a derivative authority, a derivative light, a derivative glory, if we can say that, from Scripture. So Scripture is primary, but it doesn't mean that tradition doesn't matter or is not present. Um, you can also think of it this way, that it's um, that, that the sola scripture still has a place for the value of what we'll call collective reason, meaning that you're studying the scripture together. Um, that this idea of the Bereans search the scriptures, so how'd they do that? They would have done that in the community, together, searching them, together in community. The role of teachers, right? In Acts 8, you see this. Um, you see the importance. How can I, the Ethiopian eunuch says to Philip, how, how can I know what Isaiah 53 is unless somebody tells me? I, I need somebody to help me. The role of the Spirit. Well, the Spirit bears witness, right? It illuminates. It's the illuminating ministry of the Holy Spirit. It brings to light to us that truth that sits in Scripture and brings it to a place of powerful application for our lives. That's why John 16, 13 says, when the Spirit of truth comes, he'll guide you into all the truth. For he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will declare to you the things that are to come. So, sola scriptura means that scripture is the final authority. Sola scripture, sola scripture does not mean that scripture is the only authority. Keep that in view, and may the Lord bless you.